Hello, I'd like to welcome you to the last session, to the last meeting of the Troitsa Air Program. Uh, last program this year, uh, 2022, the program will continue, of course, uh, the next year as well. It's a special program for translators of uh, uh, Slovak literature, of uh, Slovak language into other languages. And I'd like to welcome uh, the hosts, uh, the guests of uh, this program, which is uh, Pirko Kivinen from Finland, uh, Finnish translator, and uh, Slovak writer Jana Benjava. Hello. 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 <laughs> Uh, how are you? How are you feeling? Maybe Pirko in Banska Štiavnica, where she is on her residential program translating uh, Jana Benjova's book Cafe Hiena, uh, Sing Off program, Pan Odprevádzania. And uh, Janka Benjova is in Bratislava right now, which is uh, rather unusual for her because as far as now you're traveling around the world all the time and now you are in your parents home uh for the discussion so so how are you uh maybe pirko how how did you enjoy your stay in banska stiavnica uh, i was really uh enthused about this uh grant that i was um uh, accepted uh, that I could have it, and uh, um, the professor of um, uh, Slovak language in the University of Uvascula, she was the uh, person who uh, promoted me uh, to uh, apply for this, and uh, when I heard that it, uh, finally that I was accepted, I uh, was very glad I knew that this would be in Banska Stevnica, but I was very happy uh, about the possibility to do this uh, uh, translation work here because it's also has some some meaning for me because here was the first forestry education in the world and I'm a, originally I'm a forest uh, forestry uh, teacher and a forest professional so it was like a little like uh, a little uh, I would say a little piece for the cake extra. I would like to add that this uh, discussion is quite unusually in English uh, and you have joined uh, two of your biggest hobbies in, in your life, which is forestry. Uh, as you said, you have uh, worked um, all your life as a university teacher and Banska Stiavnica is, is, is a, a great town for finding out maybe more about forestry as well. And you are very keen on languages. You speak several languages. And several years ago, you started to study Slovak uh, at the University of Jöveskille in, in, in Finland uh, with your university teacher, Anna Kipo, uh, which has maybe brought you uh, with uh, a closer contact to Slovak language and, 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 and Slovak literature. Uh, so we'll speak about it a, a little bit later. Now I'd like to ask Janka, uh, whether she is uh, in Bratislava for a longer time or maybe for a short stay. I actually don't know who spread that rumor that I'm traveling around the world. <laughs> That's really <laughs> not the case. Like what I'm doing actually since pandemic mostly is just traveling between Kursek where I'm now living. Actually, I have been living there for five years and uh, Bratislava and it started mostly because one thing is that I have my parents and friends here. The other thing was that I was writing a book about Bratislava, uh, Flaner's shirt, which was already published. And then I actually followed with working on another book, which actually is based on re-interviewing re people with whom I did interviews 25 years ago, and most of them actually live in Bratislava. So, so I was coming back here to do the interviews, but I love Bratislava. So I'm, I'm really glad to be here. And the other place I really like very much is Banska Stiavnica. And I actually have, I, I have been there 
I think it was like two years ago when during the pandemic, uh, the, the, the place, the department was offered uh, to writers instead of publishers because it was not possible to travel because of COVID. So I've spent there, I think actually in November and it was wonderful to be in the forest. Yeah. By the way, this discussion is a great opportunity because we have never, uh, we never spoke together in English uh, with, with Janka. And do you like, do you know each other? Uh, do you know Pierre Kakivin? And have you, uh, do you like uh, discussions with translators of your book? Oh, I very much like it. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to to meet Pierre this way because I actually I was very happy to hear that someone is translating my book into Finnish because I'm a big fan of Finnish literature. I actually very much like uh, Kari Hotakainen is one of the writers I always was a big fan of. And then I think five years ago, I was in Berlin at some conference and there was a very interesting person and personality. And also then I have found out about her books, Rosa Lixon. Yeah. I read uh, then in English. I think now she's already translated also in Slovak or Czech. But um, that was a really wonderful time I spent with her and her daughter. Actually, her daughter's name is Saga. And I actually <laughs> ins was inspired by that. And I used it in my book, Bandala. There is a person whose name is Saga, and she is talking about her mother being too eccentric. And that's why she got that name. So yeah, I, I really like the, the Finnish uh, culture and the Finnish uh, literature. So I'm very glad that I maybe can, through the translation, become a part of it. I, I, I liked Rosa Lixon as well. I have read one of her books of short stories in, in, in Czech and I, I liked it really very much and she definitely a very eccentric person according to these short stories uh, uh one one uh, question to 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 Pierre Kikivin, do you while translating Jana Benjova's book do you have maybe already uh, some questions that you would like to ask her or that um, maybe you would like to consult with her uh I uh, yes, uh, the, the first to say that uh, when, when I chose the book, it was uh, mainly uh, a coincidence because uh, uh, Professor Anna Kippe gave us students books, and uh, uh, somehow when I uh, just was um, looking uh, thoroughly about the book, I had some feeling that. Uh, I, I want to take this first, of course, physically, it was a small book, but something about the story and the uh, structure in that book somehow tempted me. And uh, what I like translating a lot and I can, uh, I like to concentrate on the thing. It's like my own world. And uh, this uh, translation, I feel it is, uh, very uh, in certain matter, it is there is so much um, different kind of um, happenings and different kind of feelings, and uh, I have to be very accurate about uh, how I can do it, and I uh, it takes it takes a lot of time, but it it uh, doesn't bother me. But I feel it is there's a lot of work and. Uh, concentration because it has so different different niveaus and uh, these um, feelings they are they are uh, expressed very clearly and uh, then uh, when I uh, try to compare to Finnish language so uh, sometimes I take into as a tool a Swedish, language or English language to, to combine the feeling of this book. And uh, also one thing that made me choose this book was about uh, the life 
of um, nor normal people, I would say like that. Uh, because uh, when I was a student, when I graduated, I was in uh, exchange in uh, Czechoslovakia. And uh, since that time, I had some, it was like an injection that I, I like to have more, more uh, contacts and uh, I would like to travel to Czechoslovakia and Czech and Slovak. So uh, it was, there were so many reasons to, to pick this book. And uh, it's, um, it, has, it has all the time somehow for me in the translation and in the uh, content of the book, there are some uh, uh, surprises. And uh, that makes it okay, uh, very, very- Before, before maybe- we, mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, okay. sorry yes. to interrupt you. Yeah, okay. Before uh, we shall start to, to, to discuss this book, um, I'd like to ask you why uh, why have you chosen to, to study Slovak language? It's maybe a very obvious kind. It, it's a question that uh, you have been asked maybe many times because uh, you have learned English, you have learned Swedish, German, a little bit of French. Uh, and why Slovak? Um, you wrote in, in, in one of your interviews that you studied it uh, at the university in Jovoskula in, in, in mm -hmm. Finland. And there you met your teacher, Anna Kipo, uh, which uh, brought you uh, to, to, to Slovak literature and, and, and Slovak language. But why, why Slovak? Was it... The, was it the coincidence or is it the chance or was it that experience that you mentioned that you have been in Czechoslovakia? I think it dates back to this time when I was uh, after just my graduation and uh, I, um, at that time when I uh, graduated in, in the beginning of the 1980s and uh, Czechoslovakia, the university had co contacts with uh, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Hungary, and also other countries uh, for uh, ha having an exchange period. And uh, also about the uh, atmosphere of the world and uh, the politics and everything. Uh, we uh, in Finland, we are very, we're very aware about what, uh, and we're watching TV and uh, newspapers, what is happening in the societies. And uh, so there was also often about culture, sports, politics in, in TV uh, and the newspapers uh, in Finland about uh, Czechoslovakia and uh, uh, Poland and so on. And uh, so it is like learning the history and the uh, everyday life and uh, also my my parents weren't politically active but we we discussed about things at home and we were watching tv and reading newspapers and uh, after this uh, uh, training period in Brno uh, I was uh, I didn't know the language but I had a little dictionary and when I was traveling in a tram or I was uh, being in a car or I was walking, I very often looked at the, uh, what uh, is mentioned in the, what the names of the shops and uh, what's the texts and so on. And uh, I was listening people very thoroughly. I was able to visit um, uh, first the students and their homes and the uh, teachers and so on. So I was all the time listening very thoroughly and uh, Somehow I was attached to the language and it dates back to that time that uh, I would like to learn sometimes about this language, but uh, it wasn't possible in our area. And then when I started to study German in Jyväskylä, I noticed that there is a department for Slovak language, but I didn't have time to begin it to start the language because I was working and I was studying the German and there were lots of things going on. 
So when I finished my German studies, I thought that now, now we'll try this Slovak because they are very close to each other. Their languages are relatives and, and uh, I haven't uh, felt bad about that. On the contrary, I'm very, very happy about coming to this uh, culture and this uh, language culture deeper acquainted. <laughs> And this is your first uh, literary translation from from Slovak. You have you have uh, translated a little bit uh, at the university from Dušan Dušek, yes, yeah. text. And uh, this is your first Slovak translation. Yeah, as a as a whole book, and uh, I have started a little bit already in in uh, uh, at home about this book, uh, but. Uh, uh, there was short stories or poems or what I had done and also this like newspapers or uh, uh, material of uh, different uh, occupations and uh, forestry and so on. But this is the, the real, real effort to uh, find out what, what is the story all about and uh, I enjoy it. There's a lot of work, but um, I have always known that this kind of work fits to me. On the contrary, that if I'm outside in the forest and uh, make plans, but I like to uh, be myself to a certain extent. And uh, this is, uh, so far it has been a good hobby, but uh, I don't deny I would could start to translate um some books or literate productions mm -hmm. and uh, cafe hina a plan of prevadzania it's a book for that was originally published in in slovak in 2008 and yeah. in uh 2012 it uh, got the uh, the the prize of the european literature uh european Litla union for 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 literature Yes. And since that, it was translated into Czech, into Slovenian language. Uh, can we a little bit say a little bit about the the, the circumstances uh, when you wrote this book? It's a book about a uh, relationship of Elsa and her friend Jan, and uh, there is a metaphor uh, about crossing uh, crossing the the old town through the river through the bridge uh, over the river danube to petržalka which is a housing estate which is completely different strange world for elsa and uh, it, it, it's a it's a it's a specific part of town with a lot of block of flats and the specific people and uh, a, a loneliness and she very sensitively reflects all what is what is going on and uh, there is a specific story about the title sink of uh, plan so Janka, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the circumstances when when you were writing uh, this book this several years ago uh just to make it correct, the book was actually already translated into 14 languages, so it's not just Slovenian and, you know, but in Czech, it's also French or I'm very happy that, of course, it was published in English because that that opens a possibility for people who don't speak Slovak to read it because I think a lot of translators for example, from Finnish or Spanish, can read it first in English. So that was really a kind of breakthrough for me. Uh, the it's for me, it's really like ancient book because I finished writing it in 2016. So in 2016, no, six, yeah, 2008, it was published. So it's more like it's it's 15 years ago but i have talked about it a lot especially through those years with translators actually so i i never stopped talking about it so i'm actually very good at it but i think there are a lot of a lot of kind of stories in it and 
I, I wouldn't say it's about this or that, but of course it's, I think it's about love and close relationships and it's about kind of um, struggle uh, against the real, um, real life, I would say. I think that's why students can connect easily with this book is, it, it is because um, it also captures some part of the life when you still have dreams or you still want to live like you were dreaming about or like you were thinking you are going to live. And now you are facing the reality which is pushing you completely to a different uh, life or different sides. And um, I think what is something which I was talking about just a few days ago in Ljubljana was actually that people were very interested in a kind of scholarship or stipend which characters in this book created, which was based on that, that there were four friends and they were kind of artists art people or artists so they actually made this uh this agreement that one of them is always going to work into the real life and make money and he's going to or she's going to pay the stipend to the to three rest so they can just enjoy life and there are a lot of people who were really inspired by that and who were asking me if there was a part of uh if that was possible in Slovakia to, to do this. So I, I think that there are different uh, parts or different stories in the book or different topics which are uh, kind of, which people are relating to, yeah? The, the other thing is that of and, course- And what's is, the, what is your answer to this? Was that really possible? I don't know. <laughs> Probably it was when it's in the book, you know? So- <laughs> Of course, part of the question is always if it's autobiographical and, you know, but it's also a, a lot of people want to talk more about Petržalka, which is like, I think it is a part of the town which become a kind of character, one of the main characters of the book. So, yeah. And uh, you speak uh, in absolutely different way about Petr Žalka in, um, um, in your um, last but one book, uh, this flannel shirt, where, where you mentioned separate streets of, of Bratislava and one of the street uh, is, uh, is a, a specific street in Petr Žalka where you have lived for several years as well. And you have mentioned that this um, this street and maybe the life in Petržalka was for you something completely. Um, so you, you were not very happy about it, about about living in this place. No, I think it was a horror, and it is still for me. Like I I don't uh, deny that uh, my feelings about this part of Bratislava, for me, they are still the same. And I think in the, the essay, which my essay, which opens that part in the book is very much about it, that I still feel actually kind of terror when I'm entering Petržalka, but I wanted to uh, have other people talking about the streets. So, I actually interviewed people who live there, who lives, who live there still, and uh, all of them were happy to live there. So I actually, at the end, I said I'm really glad that people are fine living here because actually my experience wasn't really uh, that way. But but there, I was trying to find out why it is. And for example, one of the people who is a photographer and who also is focusing on Petržalka as a kind of uh, like like focusing on on its history and uh, also like street art and the whole infrastructure why it was built like it it was. Um, he was telling me his story and I was trying to find out because he was always saying that how 
okay it is to live there how it's how it's all right with him but at the end he said that when he was a young man he actually was really also terrified by it and he was also uh terrified by the fact that he lives in a big uh apartment house but he doesn't know anything about any of his neighbors so actually what he decided to do to become familiar with the place where he was born and where he lived was that he actually went door by door to the neighbors and asked them if he can take pictures of their living rooms and de them in their living rooms and then he made this project which is actually still on the internet where there is a big picture of this uh, house and you can click on several balconies and then it opens you the living room and the pictures of the people who who live there so i think for him there was a way i think that's the thing about petrzalka is that it makes you feel like you have to deal with it in a way that you have to find your way how to survive there and i think that was for me what, what was the most interesting thing that it actually really pushes you to to find your way to 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 be able to live there so you have to do something it's not that you can just be there without really become active you know become uh yeah yeah engaged i see that uh pirko is making notes uh, and you, you look like uh, as you would like to ask something. Uh, I was thinking about this, uh, Petro Salka. So, Jana, did you uh, choose this place by accident, or did you have some other other um, other places in mind, or uh, how did you how did it uh, uh, grew up in your head that uh, it? could be this this is the base where this um all things even happen in this book no i think it was always uh, this kind of place for people who didn't live there especially from the people from old part of bratislava it was always a place which sounded a bit terrifying it was something with really uh, ugly architecture and also it is behind the Danube, so you have to cross the river to go there. And it's built in a way that very easily you can get completely lost in it. You, you, it's very, uh, the streets are really, I would say, disorganized in a way. And uh, so for people who didn't know uh, that part, it was really a kind of nightmare to to find something there and then to find a way out of there, which um, I'm actually uh, reflecting in the book. But, uh, but on the other hand, for me, it's also a kind of metaphor for any place where, you know, when, when you live, you travel, you see places, there are places you see and immediately you, you think, oh, this is a place where I really wouldn't like to live. And I think this is, for for years for people in Bratislava that was Petržalka I don't think it's now but it was before so I think it's it doesn't matter so much uh, if, if people do know about Petržalka who are reading the book because there was what questions I was getting how people can uh, how people can understand your book when they are from Brooklyn and I said of course they can because I think that what I described about the place, this is what is important. So it's not the real place, but the place in my book. Well, I, I usually got lost uh, in the past uh, when I entered Petržalka. Nevertheless, I, I grew up in uh, another housing estate of, of Bratislava. And I'd like to ask more about, about the title, this Sting of Plan. Uh, what kind of phenomenon is it to see somebody off? I don't think that's actually a, it captures really the Slovak title because um, I think in, in English you don't have really the word for the sentence I was trying to 
the sentence which is in Slovakia, which is plan of prevádzania, which is actually plan of seeing people off in English, but seeing people off in English, it really means just to, uh, for example, when someone comes to the visit and you see him uh, off to the train, yeah, but in, in, in our culture, what it was tied with was a kind of giving the person protection and love and care because it was it was connected with, for example, when 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 boy was dating a girl, he always at the end of the uh, date uh, have seen her off to her home to you know protect her to make her feel safe and loved. And it was also like, for example, with old people, you would, you the, the their daughters or their grandchildren would have seen them off to some places to, to make them feel better and to also give them a company so they can share their their road or their journey. They can share it together so they can prolong their time together, their talks, their sharing something so it was about also about sharing a uh, life or a life journey to put it in a kind of cliche way i i very much like this phenomenon because as you said um this is this this odprevádzanie or seeing of somebody uh means very often that uh, i have to part with somebody uh but i don't want to part with him immediately so i say uh i will see you off home and uh that sort of uh prolongs the time that you can spend with 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 this person talking and uh very often it, it happens that seeing off can be a plan for maybe a whole night that you see somebody off to his home and then he says because the conversation is quite interesting and it's not yet over and he says well and now i will see you off and so he accompanies you to your home and then as far as the conversation is not over yet then you see him off again and you can walk in this way in this seeing off uh plan maybe the whole night so i very much like the title i very much like this this metaphor of this book it was also uh something which i remember from childhood actually which what how i got to learn the city because it was seeing of my schoolmates after the school that first time i have seen some parts of bratislava i have never seen before so I have noticed that ah, there are some other places too where I can just walk. And because, you know, the parents, when you are a child, the, they tell you straight home, yeah? From the school, After school. walk, straight home, yeah? So that's what you do. Which was not time. your case, of course. But then after a while, you just go first to see off some friends who live nearby the school or nearby where you live, but then you, you get more and more courage. And I remember that, for example, I don't think I ever had the courage to see someone off to Petržalka, but I, I had a school in, a, in an old town and I actually don't think there were a lot of um, kids who lived in Petržalka, but, but I'm sure there were some. You will have to cross the river Yeah, and enter uh, a completely, a completely new world. Uh, Pirko, you you were familiar with with these connotations of this of this uh, seeing of phenomenon? Yes, no. I was. I'm very uh, glad, thankful that it was. Uh, we uh, you started to talk about that because um, uh, I was thinking a lot about this uh, this title and. Uh, uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't finish that. What would it be in the end? But I had something like that in mind, and uh, uh, I think this. Uh, what happened? See of somebody. Uh, I was uh, also. I don't know if it's common nowadays anymore. But when I was a child, uh, we were. If some friend came to us, or I went to some friend, uh, we or. Uh, 
we came to see off each other for some while because we were living in the city and it's good to have somebody to, uh, to protect or to support you and also parents did so if we had guests then uh, parents say let's go we will see you off for some some uh, squares in the city and uh, it is like some kind of um, protection or uh, physical and uh, um, mental protection for the other person that uh, we keep contact that we don't just cut this visit or this um, event we have been together and I this uh, gave me I was really happy about this, that, that this was uh, spoken because I uh, every once in a while I uh, try to again and again to think how would I explain it in Finnish and now I have an excellent idea for that. I think that's a difference between the car culture and the culture yeah. of walking people because you know yeah. that you have to walk with the person and it also is showing friendship and love because you just you sharing with someone the journey which is not really yours anymore but you want to stay with the person so it become yours i i like it very much i think it's very nice nice thing uh i i just remember that that reminds me that maybe from the the slovak literature the the best seeing of person is Stanislav Rakus, uh, who is uh, living in Košice, because uh, it's a real pleasure to talk to him and not to interrupt the conversation. I, I that that was the case when when I once uh, walked. Uh, while seeing of seeing of him to to his place, and then he uh, would wanted to see me off to my hotel uh, in in Kosice, and we spent maybe the whole night uh, with with this process. And Stanislav Rakus is is the is the winner for the second time of the of the biggest Slovak literary prize, Anas of Litera. And another question for 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 Pirko. Uh, did you have maybe time to 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 consider maybe your next translation or maybe to consider uh, who from from the Slovak authors would you like to translate next or uh, who 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 is quite interesting for you? Uh, I when we had this uh, Slovak uh, literature courses we had an excellent um, presentation of many uh, many formal time and for many uh, uh, today's uh, authors and uh, uh, there are so many that uh, I I cannot yet uh, express that but I have the feeling that I would like to continue continue and uh, uh, when I finish this, I, I see what is my feeling. Perhaps I would like to uh, compare some other of uh, Jana Benjova's books, but uh, I still, um, I want to uh, go step by step, but uh, when, you, when you eat, you get more and more hungry. And uh, this is my somehow secret wish that I could continue translation. Uh, of Slovak literature, but I cannot yet point out immediately. I have some uh, some children's uh, poem uh, books of poems. I have uh, a little bit translated at home just for for my own own hobby. But uh, I I'm not. I still have. Uh, questions but uh, I had uh, that is my wish that I could continue this that this would not be the last one <laughs> as, as a, uh, as a uh, novel or book but uh, then of course I have done some of these professional texts and so on but so the road is open and uh, uh, <laughs> I'm uh, ready for the new journey. <laughs> 
Yana's mm -hmm. last but one book, this, this Flannery shirt is about the streets of Bratislava and, yeah. and wandering around the, the, the street in a way that you can speak to the people and uh, really spend time on the street and uh, walk it several times and return and so on. Uh, did you have time in, in Banska Štiavnica? Because it's it's a great town for walking. Uh, did you have time to, to, to observe the town in this way? Yes, I have this uh, set, not set the program, but I uh, have decided that I'm doing this uh, translating, but I every day I will make some uh, some shorter or longer walks just to have fresh air and just to see uh, see the town and uh, feel the atmosphere here, and uh, so. Uh, um, step by step, I haven't done very uh, long, long, long trips, but uh, and I I don't want to hire a bicycle because I have some bad memories from a bicycle hiring since I was in Germany in a language course and uh, there was these hills. So I do long walking, hiking trips, and uh, that is uh, and uh, I will I am observing and I'm this discussing with people and asking questions and I go to cafeteria and so on so uh, I this was my wish that I could in in the near um, circle find ideas and uh, learn about Banska Stjernica in many ways. Janka, do you have your favorite place, uh, your favorite Flaneric place or favorite Flaneric street in uh... Stjavnica? Actually, I don't because for me Stjavnica is not a place where you can do, behave like a flaneur because it's too small, like there is one, two, three streets yeah, and then you mm -hmm. over. But what I what I think Stjavnica is for is, is hiking and I actually mm -hmm. did every day hike to a hill which is called Tanad and it's like one and a half, two hours to go back and, and forth from your place and it's the views are beautiful and I think what is really beautiful is the trees because when I compare it to the place um, in Hungary to Kursek where I also go to the forest the trees are different here it's like really like to be in a real mountains already and I also I'm a big fan of the botanical garden they have there I think it's it's really a special, special place. Uh, I was actually, I'm glad that the residency for translators is exactly there because I think it's the right, right place. And actually I was talking to some of my friends thinking that where other, where other we can actually build something for translators or writers, where is the place which is so unique in Slovakia, some other place except of, Banska Šťavnica, and I must say that I was this summer in Levotra, and I think that's also a unique, unique little town with, with beautiful surroundings and, and nature. So I'm glad that actually we have some places where we can say, oh yeah, there you can go for a month and just, just work and, and enjoy the place. Excuse me. Can I ask uh, one question from Jana? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, it, it is about this translation, and uh, there are sometimes some words that I have to um, fix and uh, try okay. to find the right uh, meaning. So the, very often there is a word Lievanek or Lievan. Well, yeah. it's not 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 that's it I, I mean I understand it's not a pancake in that uh, sentence if it it is alone but what what is uh, behind of this word is it a swear word or <laughs> or, 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 or what does I it mean or what is the idea 
It's what the actually Elsa is talking about it that when she was looking at the faces of the young men in Petrzalka, yeah. it reminded yeah. her of Lievan. It's yeah. yeah. kind of pastry, which yeah. if you don't put a jam on it or anything, it's just kind of uh, plain. It doesn't have any yeah. um, real. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't show Features, any options, you know wrinkles. it's just it's just plain nothing yeah. so yeah. kind of dull too so yeah that, that's it so it, i was trying to uh express how the faces of some people mm -hmm. uh for Elsa, what, what kind of impression it gave her about those people, like that they don't actually, like it's it's something like when Elliot was writing about hollow people, yeah, mm -hmm. was I think there was the, the 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 word. So I was trying to find an image to to express that kind of hollowness of of the people's souls. So you look in the <laughs> face, and there is nothing no expression looking for nothing, no. no expression looking for some kind of feeling expression yeah. some some thoughts behind it and you, you you just look at it and you see well there is maybe nothing in yeah. it no mimic no gestures yeah just yeah like a little bit like a dead yeah can be mm -hmm. She's actually talking about it because they don't have also hair because mm -hmm. they just don't yeah. want to have hair. So she's talking about that their hair only can spread out once they are buried under the in the grave, yeah, because that's the time when still our hair and nails mm -hmm. can grow. So that's the time when their hair can start to grow. So yeah, it's a bit like mm -hmm. zombies too. <laughs> Okay, so you you are perhaps open for for another questions and and inquiries uh, from Pirkon. I quite I I want to say that I quite disagree with you about Banska Stiavnica that it's it's not in not good enough for a Flaneric experience. There are several streets over there which I like so much and I would like to walk them uh, every day, like Horna Ruzhova maybe or. Uh, some streets on on the other part of the town i'd like to the end uh i'd like to ask you uh maybe one more question about this this new book that you're right uh, working on as you said uh, several years ago you did several interviews for the park magazine and now after many years you're going back to these interviews and and to these people you interview uh, so who are you interviewing maybe right now? Uh, just to go back to the Banska Shanitsa, I love streets in Ban Banska Shanitsa. It's not about that if you like or dislike the streets or if they are charming. But for me, Flaner is a kind of phenomenon uh, which is tied to a city, not to a town. Because I think Flaner is someone who spends day in a town or in a city so it means that you are walking the streets and you are actually changing environment while doing that and that kind of rhythm you can only get in a city because you need to go through a different parts of it to have this different feelings and to see it's also about the people. Like when you walk Stara Ruzhova, I don't think you even meet anyone, you know? So yeah. it's it's about the life you can see. And I was walking a lot in Banska Shiamica, but I must say I have seen very little life, unfortunately, especially in this old part. I didn't walk the the part where is the housing estate, yeah. So that's for me. The, of course it's 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 lovely, those those few streets. I, I like it. And, and it's very, the nature is beautiful there. And I don't interview actually now anyone, thanks God, because I already finished <laughs> the book. And uh -huh. Uh -huh. it includes 10 interviews and uh, it should be published in a month. Uh, it should be out in a month. So, 
So uh, I'm glad that I actually don't have to work anymore. And are you thinking about a new book? Actually, I'm writing a book which is uh, kind of um, essay or no, kind of something between essay and novel now, but but I'm already writing it. I actually started writing it when I was in Banska Šťavnica, and that was, I think, one and a half year ago or two years ago already. Yeah, I was there in November. So, so that's the book I'm slowly working on, and I think I will be working on it probably a uh, couple of years. So I don't want to talk about it yet. Okay, so thank you very much for this uh, great interview. Thank, uh, thank you to Pirko Kivinen, Janka Benjova, uh, Eva Ilievsky and Dagmar Zubkova who organized this, this, this meeting. Uh, good, good stay in Banska Tjavnica and good luck mm -hmm. with uh, translating the book and uh, perhaps good luck with choosing another great books from the Slovak literature and uh, good luck to Janka as well for writing the new book or Thank new you. books as well. Thank, Thank you very pleasure. much. Bye bye. Thank you very much. It was a real pleasure to uh, meet Jana and uh, to discuss and with Dado we had a very uh, pleasant discussion and uh, I wish all the best for you and uh, uh, I wish you uh, welcome to Finland. Uh, have you been Jana, in Finland? No, I haven't. No, no. I, yeah. I really I hope I will go there one day. Yeah. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you. And uh, very uh, enjoyable winter time for all of you. Thank you very much. Ilya. Stay in touch. Okay. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.